YouTube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. This is a video all about cross stitching with a little bit of knitting. Uh, I am recording here on uh, June the, what is the date today? June the 21st? It is June the 21st, 2022 and I am in London, Ontario, Canada. You can find me on Instagram at Off The Grid Needle Arts and also at Evertotes, which is the Instagram page for my small business, Evertotes, where we sell project bags for crafters and are the home of the Leo and, Ro Leo and Roxy Flosco products. So, how's everybody doing today? I, I have a list, everybody. I have a list because I had a lot of things that I really wanted to remember to tell you about today. And I have some significant stitching progress to share with you, at least significant in my world for me. Luna is under my desk today. Uh, Luna is my dog. She is a large American Bulldog mix, uh, mixed with something special. And usually she's behind me um, on her bed, but uh, today she's directly underneath me and in fact she almost has her head on the sewing machine foot pedal so things could get interesting okay so let's get right into it so I have a few things to share with you first before I get to my whips today so this is why I needed the list first thing I wanted to give a shout out to was uh, is is Nuri from Shaded Stitchery. Nuri has just released a, a Juneteenth sampler, an original Juneteenth sampler design. I'm gonna be, I've, I've got a photo up here on the screen, take a look. It is wonderful. It's really, it's it's so meaningful and beautiful. Um, I've, I really, I, I started following Nuri oh, maybe six months ago or so on Instagram because I really liked her thought process behind her designs and um, so and and Nuri and I have been talking a little bit uh, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret there is a future Evertote shaded stitchery collaboration in the works um, most likely for early uh, January uh, maybe January 2023 uh, but but we're, we're, we've got our heads put together and we've just sent her a package of Leo and Roxy Flosco floss to, uh, to use her, put her creative juices to work and see what she comes up with. Because I, I've just, I found her work very inspiring. So check her out. She's on Instagram at Shaded Stitchery. I will be putting links in the drop down box below for everything that I'm talking about today. If by some chance I miss something and I say something that you can't find any information about, please leave me a question in the, in the comment field below and I will get back to you. Okay, next up I wanted to briefly mention the auctions that I am hosting over on my work Instagram page, which is the at Evertotes Instagram page. Uh, my husband John is running the New York City Marathon in November and we are fundraising uh, for that run um, in support of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. And so uh, along with Jacob, we've been doing some, some a stitch along. Um, I'm gonna show it to you because I did bring it today. Even though I haven't worked on it, I still wanted to, it's a long story why I didn't work on it. Basically, when I was gonna work on it, it was here and I was at home. And so it just didn't happen. But this is my work so far. The pattern is called Birds from Bernard's Books. Birds from Bernard's Book. And it is, the, the border pattern is the, the relief design where um, the outside of the design is stitched and the, the, the design itself is left open, kind of like cut work. It's really, really beautiful. So 50% of the proceeds of, come on, there we go. 50% of the proceeds of this chart from Jacob. Now, sometimes I always, sometimes I always, 
sometimes I forget to give all of the information. So I'm going to try to do a bit better job today. This chart is only available on Jacob's website as a PDF. And it's quite easy to find on his website, www.modernfolkembroidery.com. 50% of the proceeds um, are being donated to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Jacob just sent another 750 US towards our fundraising efforts. So that means that because of you purchasing this chart, we have raised 1,750 US dollars that's gone directly to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I just, I am blown away by your response to this and it's, it's quite touching. And Jacob, again, thank you. So in, in support and also in uh, co-fundraising efforts, I am running some auctions over on the Facebook group, not Facebook group, pardon me. I have a Facebook group, but I'll tell you more about the Facebook groups in a few minutes. Uh, the Instagram page and uh, the way that I run these auctions I was completely inspired by my good friend Michelle Garrett Michelle Bendy Stitchy Designs most of you know who she is here on YouTube and also her super fun designs she's a great human and she um, she's she was a pro at running these Instagram auctions and so I took my lead from her I took my I followed her lead on on how to do this and so just a really quick recap the first two auctions went up last Friday there are two separate posts the first post and I'll have photos in here I'm going to insert photos here of those auction items the first item up for auction was a project bag from me here at Evertote a small project bag your choice you don't have to pick the one that's in the photo you can have whichever one if it's a fabric that we've got in the shop that's already a small bag, if, and you prefer, you can pick that. And then four spools, four 150 spools of single ply Vicki Clayton HDF silk. These are old school silk. This was back from when Vicki Clayton was originally dying silk floss. The date stamp on them when I purchased them was 2009. These are coming directly from my personal stash, and they're beautiful. So. People have been bidding. Uh, it's been really, really exciting to see that uh, my bit of special treasure is going to raise some money that's going to a good cause. So that's the first auction item. Second auction item up that is up is a chart by Rosewood Manor along with the sulky uh, thread spools that were done up for that chart as well as a small project bag. It's a lovely chart. The thread looks delicious. And so those are still available up for bid until this coming Friday. Uh, Friday, what's the date? Well, today's the 21st. So today is Wednesday, no, Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. The auction will be, the auctions will be open until Friday and the instructions are there at what time the auctions close. And that's important because if you're bidding, you need to know what time the auction is going to end because we are going to take the very last bid right at the time when we say that it's cut off as soon as the clock ticks ticks up on the auction item the, the bidding will be closed and the last bid will be the winning bid I wasn't going to do a new auction item next Friday but I had a really really wonderful surprise message from my friend Josh if you've been here for a while you've heard me talk about my friend Josh Josh Mole from the Netherlands. She is a knitwear designer. She also is the designer I've I've just recently been mentioning. I've been working again on my Caroline shawl. Uh, it, it was the beautiful green shawl that I showed a few episodes ago. Josh has offered to knit someone a Caroline shawl. And that is the auction item up for bid. It's going to be a Caroline shawl knit, hand knit, by my friend Josh for you in your choice of she has two yarns for you to pick from one of them is a beautiful robin's egg blue and the other one is a, a beautiful pink and so I'm going to put up the photos here of the two choices of yarn color in case you think that that might be something that you might like to bid on it's a very special prize hand knit by my friend Josh 
shipped anywhere in the world. Josh is from the Netherlands. So isn't that kind of cool? Because Jacob, of course, is also from the Netherlands. Josh is from the Netherlands. So it's almost like there's a little connection here. I think maybe one day I need to go and visit my friends in the Netherlands. So that is going to be up for bid this coming Friday. And I will also have put in a photo here of the completed Caroline shawl, what that shawl will look like um, for, for you when it is when it is completed. So pretty special, right? So you need to be following, following along on Instagram on my work page there. Again, links are in the, all the information is in the drop down box below. And that way on Friday, you should see the post pop up with the information uh, on the auction. So once again, a huge thank you to Josh. Right, I know, that's a good one. That's really good. Okay, so we talked about, we talked about that and we talked about the options. We talked about Nuri. Okay, oh, what's on the wall behind me? I mentioned it quickly last week and then I totally got so excited about my, my new bag from Cheryl that I totally forgot to talk about what's on the wall. Like I said last week, I usually just keep the description of what's on the wall behind me in the drop down box below because invariably somebody asks. Uh, so, and the, the number one thing that I get asked at well too, first of all, is that this one right here where my finger is, that floral design. They want to, you want to know what that is. That is a tapestry. Um, so it's a needlepoint tapestry that my friend Dawn, now Dawn is a knitter from Sarnia. I've known her since I started recording the Fiber Friends podcast way back in 2017. We met Dawn and her friend Lisa. They are the hosts of the podcast, The Codependent Knitters. And Dawn and Lisa, two of the nicest knitters you ever did meet. And if you enjoy a good knitting podcast, you will love their podcast because their knowledge is great and their friendship is wonderful. So I always, um, Dawn and Lisa, can't go wrong. Dawn found that at a thrift shop in Sarnia and uh, she picked it up. In fact, it's not the only piece that she found. There were two others. What happened to the, oh, the one of them I turned into a pro, you know what, I'll go get it because now that I'm talking about it, I have to show you because it's kind of, it's kind of unique. Okay, hang on. Are you ready? So actually, I wasn't gonna do a whatever happened to, but now that I've brought this out, I think I'm gonna have to do it. You see, because I know as soon as I open this bag, I'm not going to be able to stop thinking about it. Now I'm just holding the bag and I can't stop thinking about it. Okay, let me turn it around. So this stitching here, now, Somebody found this way back when, when I did this originally, I did not do the stitching. Like, like I was saying, my friend Dawn found three cross stitch pieces, well, three needlework pieces at a thrift shop. This was one of them. It was, um, it was framed. I hesitate to use the word badly because sometimes, you know, if it gets the job done and it serves your purpose, then I don't think that's framed badly. However, for um, conservation purposes, it was framed poorly. Uh, it was stuck down on some, what do they call that? Sticky board, tiny board. And the glue breaks down over time. And so if you're finishing your projects on glue board or sticky board, you should know that it's probably not gonna be a long-term. Like if you're planning on passing it down to your kids or something, it's, it's probably not the best best idea. Um, but if it's just a, a quick thing that you just are doing for fun and it's really just for you, then you know there's really no right or wrong. Do you know what I mean? That's why I hesitate to say things like that because it's, it's um, there's a lid for every pot. Does that make sense? You know, sometimes it, there's just a different reason to do something a bit differently. However, for this one, because uh, I, I wanted to salvage it, I wanted to make it into something. I wanted to save somebody's hard work. That's a lot of stitching there that somebody did. That's an incredible amount of work. So I removed it and I very carefully removed it from the sticky board. There was some residue on the back, so I had to wash it. 
when I washed it, there was a little bit of bleeding, um, bleeding being, if, if that's a new expression for you, the thread, uh, sometimes, even if thread is color fast, sometimes the, the, the color will leach out when it, it gets wet. So it will bleed, it will run. And where did it happen? I think it was mostly around, I think it was mostly up in here. It's now it's hard to see. So what you can do to try to fix something like that is you keep the water cold, keep the project as flat as you can in the sink and just rinse, rinse, rinse. So more cool water, you know, swish it around gently, but not agitate it. Um, release, um, get rid of the water, put in fresh water, rinse, 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 rinse. And usually you can get a lot of it out. Sometimes not all, but a lot of times you can get a lot of it out. The less you, the less you scrunch it and crush it in the water, the better. So you want to keep it nice and flat and just kind of gently agitate the water around it, not the stitching. Does that make sense? And then let the water out so that you're, you're getting clear, fresh water, fresh, clean water. Do it again. Just keep doing it, doing it, doing it. And then you'll get most of it out fingers crossed, right? So anyways, um, I finished it into a project bag. Now I'm going to save what's inside this project bag until later on. Then I'll show you all what's inside because it's a good one. And it's been so long since I looked at it. Now I'm excited. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that is, uh, was a save the stitches from the thrift shop. This little one right here is a just Nan piece. At the very end of the podcast today, what I'll do is I'll take the camera and I'll do a close up video. Um, you know, I'll just take the camera and I'll put it really close so that you can see these in much closer detail. This is a Just Nan piece. This here is um, Rejoice Evermore by Macy of Quaint Rose Needle Arts. That's the cow design. This one here is a piece by Erica Michaels. Um, that I may stitch and be happy, I think is the title of it. I have a funny feeling it's a discontinued chart, that one there. And then way up there is Mary Harry by Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. But last but not least, this one right here. This is the Stitch North 2022 Friendship Sampler. Here it is close up. And by the end of this week, we're going to have this live in the shop. This was an exclusive design uh, to our Stitch North attendees at, back in, in uh, the beginning of April. And so we are finally ready to release this chart. This is a chart by Patty Brake of Four Boys and a Newfoundland Girl, a very good friend and a really lovely design. It's a quote by Robert Louis Stevenson. We are all travelers in the wilderness of this world. And the best we can find in our travels is an honest friend. So very apropos for our community, um, especially in a season of finally being able to gather again and see our friends and make new friends. So again, Patty Break, Four Boys and a Newfoundland Girl. I have the physical charts. Uh, and so yeah, by Friday or Saturday, that we'll probably put up a post on Instagram when these are live in the shop. So that's the friendship sampler. So that's what's on my wall. There you go. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I know, I have something really kind of cool to tell you about today. And it has nothing to do with stitching, but I still really think you're going to be interested. And this is especially for friends who are watching from the UK. If you live in the UK, my nephew lives in the UK. My nephew and his girlfriend live in the UK. And my nephew, Jonathan, his name is Jonathan, but ever since he was born, we called him, we've called him Johnny. So to me, he's Johnny, but to you and probably for the sake of his business, I should call him Jonathan. And he, so Jonathan, has started a brand new business. He has opened up a shop on Etsy and he is, 
I, it's so cool. I have to tell you. So what he's done is he has set up an iron forge in his backyard in London, England. He lives in London, England. I live in London, Ontario, Canada. My nephew lives in London, England. He has set up a forge in his backyard. And apparently you can hear him hammering three blocks away. But he lives in a neighborhood where his neighbors think what he's doing is really cool. And so they think it's fun. And apparently, apparently Jonathan learned how to do this. He took a class a while back and he, blacksmithing, and he took a class. I think it was a gift from his parents, um, my husband's sister. So Jonathan is my husband's sister's son. And uh, he took a blacksmithing course, and so he set up this forge in his backyard, and he's making these really cool things. And so he set up an Etsy shop. The name of his shop is called Half Crown Forge. And I'm gonna, again, I'll have all of the links in the drop down box below. And so I'm gonna just describe, because I asked him this morning, we were chatting, and I, I said, you know, what would be something that you would want me to tell fellow crafters who understand, you know, that you're, you're putting your heart and soul into these creations that you're making, what would you want me to tell them? So he said about the, the items that he's making, so he's, so far what he has in his shop are handmade hooks and intertwined, intertwined hearts. And the hearts are personalized, like they have names stamped into them. They are lovely, they're lovely. So let me read you what he wrote. He said, about the hearts, they are completely handmade using traditional blacksmithing techniques, no power tools at all. And I stamp the names when the metal is still hot. I use a small anvil and hammer to shape them so each one is unique. They look great on display. I have mine on a mantelpiece or you can hang them. So he's given them as gifts before. Um, for people who are engaged or getting married, um, you know, just as a, as, a, as a really special personalized gift. So I hope that, I hope that if you're interested, you'll give him a follow on Instagram. His Instagram uh, name is at Half Crown Forge, which is the same name as his brand new Etsy shop, Half Crown Forge. And he is selling these personalized hand crafted entwined hearts made entirely by hand over a fire like traditional blacksmithing i mean how cool is that right so cool so i told him that his favorite aunt is hoping that you know maybe she might receive something special in the mail one day so uh just a couple of um notes in in regarding to his shop at the moment jonathan is doing this for the next four weeks um, so he's going to have his shop open for the next four weeks and then he's going back to Italy where he's where he was born, where he's from, uh, for the remainder of the summer to help out his family um, on their farm. And then he will be returning to his home in the UK in September where he hopes to uh, have the business up and running again at that point. So for the moment, for the next four weeks, he's only, um, he's only going to be taking orders that are from within the UK. Uh, and then when he starts back up again in September, then he's hoping to be able to offer to ship these worldwide. So for now, just UK viewers, but only and only for the next four weeks. And again, these are made entirely by hand. So they're pretty incredible, pretty special. I'll have a photo up here so that you can see. I'm, I'm pretty darn proud of him because this is really unique. And I think um, it's clear it's very clear that he is loving it. And you know the feeling, right? When you find something, a craft or a passion, and all of a sudden something clicks and you think, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm getting that feeling from Jonathan, like he's, he's found a little bit of magic in what he's doing in his backyard. And I love that. And I would, uh, I'd just love to, to, to support him. So, Thank you, thanks for listening, thanks for checking out his shop and, uh, and his Instagram page and giving him a follow. So, that's Jonathan, Johnny, and uh, 
let's see. I think maybe we should do a giveaway. Should we do a giveaway? I have a giveaway and then I have one more kind of exciting thing to tell you about. So let's do the giveaway first because what I have to tell you is even more exciting than the giveaway. So hang on, stay with me here. All right, so last week we made some coffee bags. We put some coffee bags in the shop and I love them. So I thought it's been a while since we did a bag giveaway. Let's do, okay. So um, I had a couple of extra bags where we had a different lining than what we were, what we'd meant to do. So these, they're not seconds. <laughs> they're absolutely perfect. They just don't have the, the same lining as all of the other ones that match this. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity to have a beautiful bag for a giveaway. So this is the dark roast print fabric. Comes with a coffee bean notions pouch. So this is up for giveaway. And because it doesn't want to travel alone, it's gonna come with a chart from Modern Folk Embroidery. This is How Doth the Little Busy Bee. It's one of my favorite of Jacob's small designs. And it is definitely on my, my must stitch list is growing, but this is on it. I love this chart. Let me bring it up nice and close so you can see it. Isn't it sweet? And it's not huge. It wouldn't take me long. So anyways, this is the giveaway for this week. It's the bag set. It's a medium flat bag set and the chart. How doth the busy little bee? Just come up with a way to leave the word coffee in your comment below. This is a YouTube giveaway. Do not use the word giveaway in your comment, please. Um, just use the word coffee. And then next week when I record again, I'll do a search for that word in the comments to the, for the random YouTube random comment generator to choose a winner. So, I don't know. Coffee bags. I did, I did take one for myself. I want one of these bags, so I, I, I took one. Well, I mean, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> so the way um, Matt and I work on the bags together here, Matt does the cutting, the piecing, he puts all the zippers in, and then I finish everything up. So Matt, Matt works here with me at Evertote. He's invaluable with the bag making. I used to do the entire bag myself, and then uh, Evertote has grown, and it was impossible to do everything myself. And so, with the help of Matt, and Hannah, and Leah, and now Erica as well. Erica's been with us for a few months, and now brand new, Louise. Louise is helping to pack and ship out items. Um, we've got a growing team here that make coming to work a lot of fun. So um, I finished that one up and I thought, I'm gonna have to keep this one. I'll tell you what's inside in a little bit. <sighs> okay, are you ready for my very last announcement that I need to tell you about today? It's a big one. Hold on to your hats. Every week I talk about a few people over and over again a lot. One of them is Jacob. Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. And it's been said we could have a drinking game when we talk about Jacob or even when you watch Jacob's podcast when he talks about me because he he likes to use the Leo and Fro Leo and Froxy Leo and Roxy Flosco he likes our floss and we like his charts and so it's it's a very it's a very wonderful kind of um, trio relationship between myself and Jacob and Carrie. Carrie Massio is the dyer behind Leo and Roxy Flosco and the three of us um, work very, very well together and have become friends, which has been just a, a great bonus. So I, Jacob's coming to Canada next year. <laughs> It's been in the works, it's been in the works. He and I have been discussing it for a while and it is now, I can now officially tell you about it. So, 
Just before I get into the little bit of information that I can share with you today, I just want to preface this by saying registration is not open. Um, I have no costs. I don't know how much the weekend is going to cost, uh, but I do have a location. It is booked and Jacob has confirmed that he's coming. So the big puzzle pieces are being put into motion. So I am thrilled to tell you that it has been booked right here in London, Ontario. So, and in fact, it's right around the corner from me where I am here in the workshop. It is the London Convention Center right here in my hometown, the London Convention Center. And we have two weekends booked in October of 2023. So the dates are October 6th to, I wrote it down. Did I write it down? It's not on my page in front of me, but I, I think I remember. October 6th to the 8th, which is, yes, Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. It is, I know. It's Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. However, I sort of assumed that we would maybe have some American friends who would wanna come and they don't celebrate, can, well, if, they're, if they celebrate American Thanksgiving, and they're not Canadian, they're most likely not celebrating Canadian Thanksgiving. So um, it's wide open to anybody who would like to come. But if, you're, if you would rather celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving and you're Canadian, but you still wanna come, the very next weekend, the 13th to the 15th, we're going to have a second weekend. Each weekend we can host 175 stitchers this is going to be a little bit different than our Stitch North Retreat. The Stitch North Retreat is first and foremost um, a, a place for gathering for friendship. Uh, stitching all day long with your friends and making new friends and chatting and drinking lots of coffee and admiring everybody else's projects and you know if you want to go and have a nap in the middle of the afternoon in your hotel room then you know that's kind of what Stitch North is. It's, well, in a, in a very pared down description, it's very difficult to describe Stitch North. Stitch North is the retreat that I host in Brampton, Ontario, uh, in the spring. And we are, we are full up for next spring, but we do have wait lists. Our wait lists are small. So if you're interested in coming next, uh, next spring just email hannah hannah at evertote.ca and uh, she's she's able to get you onto the wait list for either of those weekends we have two weekends for the stitch north retreat um, which are the last weekend in april and the first weekend in may of 2023 um, and and people do have to sometimes cancel you know life happens and things come up and we do have people cancel their registration so it is well worth getting on the wait list if you are um, if you would still really like to come to the stitch north spring retreat we usually always have a cancellation and are able to offer the spot to the next person on the list so the Jacob event in the fall is going to be slightly different and we are calling it Jacob Palooza because it's all about modern folk embroidery that weekend. It is going to be more of a loosely based class setting for a large group. There are going to be two exclusive retreat projects. One of them is going to be um, a brand new reproduction sampler um, and the other project is going to be more of a Quaker style design. So if you're not a sampler stitcher, but you love Jacob's Quaker designs, then there will be there will be something for you. Um, and so the sampler, I've seen it. Luna's shaking the table underneath. She's got hives at the moment. Now she is on some Benadryl, so she's uh, she's doing okay, but she's a little itchy. So every once in a while, I know. Sorry. Okay, so yes, there will be two projects and uh, Jacob will be, will be speaking about, especially in particular, the reproduction sampler. He'll be giving us uh, the history behind it, some of the stitches that were used in it. Uh, we'll be learning um, a couple of techniques, uh, finishing techniques, 
one finishing technique in particular. Uh, the supplies for the kits will be uh, done by Leo and Roxy Flosco, so there will be, um, everything will be kitted up. The linen, the floss, uh, the chart will be there, everything needed for the projects. And so each weekend we'll have both projects. So you don't have to worry that, well, I, I only wanna do the reproduction sampler, but that's Thanksgiving weekend and I can't go. Both pieces will be available both weekends. So that is all the information that I can share with you uh, at the moment. So if you would like to uh, keep in touch about finding out about new information, like when registration is going to open, how much is it going to cost, those kinds of really important questions. I've, I've opened up a new Facebook group um, and it's called Jacob Palooza. And I'll have it again in the drop down box below. So those of you who are in the Stitch North Facebook group, so that we don't have a whole lot of chatter about a separate event in the Stitch North Facebook group, I've created a totally different Facebook group. That doesn't mean that you have to pick one or the other. You can be in both. It's just that this way we can sort of streamline the conversation um, in regards with which, in regards to which event we're talking about. And as usual, couldn't do any of this organization without her. Hannah will be, um, will be an admin on the Jacob Palooza Facebook page. And so questions that are there will likely be answered by her. Jacob Palooza. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Okay. So now that we're like probably 40 minutes in, let's get to some stitching. I know I, I told you this is why I had to make a list today. So I really hope that you had a lot of decent stitching time while I was bleeding on there. Bleating, not bleeding. I'm not bleeding. How does your garden grow? Remember? I showed you this last week. This was my whatever happened to the piece that I shared with you last week. This was a design by Papillon Creations. It was a free 12 part stitch along. As far as I know, this is not available anymore. Um, and I chose to do way back when, when I started it back in 2008, <laughs> to do the specialty stitch version. So this, I showed it last week and I was working on part number five. And I told you last week that my goal was to finish part number five and I did. I finished part number five and you're going to be, you're going to really laugh when you see the only thing that I had to finish was that little butterfly down there. That's it. And then, oh, I should say, except for the beads, I, the, the whole piece has beads in it. I haven't done any of the beading. So part five is complete except for the beads and that right there, those four butterflies is the complete part five. So now part six, and I'm going to show you the chart because it was a freebie. It's not available. I don't think I'm breaking any rules here. Um, and I, if you could stitch it from this, well, more power to you. So this is what it looks like when I'm stitching off of, you want to see something hilarious? This is like another lifetime ago. I printed this on the back of a score that I was recycling. I used to be a private music teacher. And I also played the flute in our community orchestra here in London. Feels like a lifetime ago. It really, really does. Yeah. So I printed it on the back of a score and also some of it was like, it was all sort of, you know, scrap paper that I used to print this out on. And the other thing that I noticed was I used to also teach music for young children in my home. And we used these, uh, little characters and I don't, I think I was trying to print stickers, but I did it by accident. So it came out on this paper and I'm like, it's like a little time capsule, little part of my previous life. So that was kind of, that was kind of a fun rediscovery. So parts six, part six, it's the next ones, part seven and eight are together, but part six, I'm, I'm back to the specialty stitch version mentioned last week that part five, I chose to do the cross stitch version instead of the specialty stitch version because I didn't want to do the bullion stitch. I just didn't want to, but that's fine. 
rest of it, no bullion stitch. Uh, and I'm back to regular specialty stitches and a few crosses in parts six, which are these four corners. So one, two, three, and four. And the stitches that are used, like this is the specialty stitches instructions came with each part and they're really good. They're really well done. So what have we got here? Partial divided round eyelet, satin stitch leaf, a road square, a queen stitch variation, a satin stitch leaf, again, so two satin stitch leaves, but they're different shapes, a tied windmill stitch, and a partial round eyelet, which is different from a partial divided round eyelet. Isn't that cool? So I thought, because it worked really well for me to say that, you know, to give myself a goal for the next week's podcast, so I'm going to give myself a goal and it's going to be tiny so that it's accomplishable because this is a really old whip and you know, not working on something new and shiny is sometimes hard. So I'm going to keep it small and bite sized I'm going to just try to do one corner, one of the four corners. I'll leave it a surprise, which one I pick one of the four corners. So there you go. Goal achieved. Part five is done. I know it seems small, that little butterfly, but there were three colors in it. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't nothing. Anyways, I am using, um, uh, they're all Gentle Arts threads. Yeah, they're all Gentle Arts threads, purples and greens. I went over the colors last week. Okay. I have to try to keep myself fairly organized here. I'm going to put things in order in the pile that I talk about them. Okay, next up, uh, this weekend I actually had some really, I had four hours pretty much of dedicated stitching time on Saturday and I worked on two different projects. The first one was this, was um, Amtrak, which is the piece that I have said I'm focused on it. I want to get it done. It's massive. So it's going to take me a little while, but it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right? So as long as I keep telling you, I have to show it to you. I have to show it to you. I put two hours of work into it and I got a lot done. So I set my timer. I find this really effective for me and my personality. I set the timer for two hours and it's counting down. If I stop stitching for any reason, like to, go and help the kid, kids do something or make lunch or anything like that, I pause the timer. And so it has to be two complete full hours of actual stitching time. And then I feel like I've unlocked an achievement. So I put two hours of stitching into Amtrak. I did not bring it with me today. Uh, it's, and I probably won't bring it again for a few more weeks of progress. So I'm just going to share photos. So here's what it looked like last week when I shared it with you and you can see, um, here's where it was two hours after that. I really focused intently on the bottom left-hand corner and I completed the two motifs that are on that left-hand border. So the only thing that I have left to do on the left-hand side is the very bottom, very bottom the very bottom corner, corner piece of the design. Those two left-hand borders are now completely finished and I'm in love with it. I love it. It's just, it's been, it's been really fun to get back to it. So the details on that, it's a, it's called Amtrak, A-M-T-R-A-K. It is a design by Sampler Cove and the thread that I'm using is very old HDA, HDH, HDF, hand dyed fibers. That's what that stands for. Hand dyed fibers by Vicki Clayton. They are, it's a silk floss in the colors. Um, the red is called OMG red. The blue is called Steelies and the gray is called night smoke. I don't know if those colors are still available now that Vicki is dying again. This was again back from 2008, 2009 when I originally purchased the silk and it is one of my oldest whips. So clearly, how does your garden grow and Amtrak? They're all from about the same time period. They're quite old 
and getting back to them has been really great. And judging from some comments that I've been getting from you, and again, again, I don't say this often enough. I really appreciate your comments. I'm not very good at responding, but I read them all and I love them. So thank you. Thank you for leaving me such great comments. But what I was gonna say is that I know that many of you who have a sizable whip pile and a sizable stash, and old projects in your stash that you know, if you're not a monogamous stitcher and you're a lot, a lot like me and you, you, you know, start and stop things and you're a progress stitcher, seeing that, you know, you can go back into these really old projects and kind of re-inspire yourself, it's been, it's been really nice. So I hope that it's kind of maybe re-inspired you to dig out a few things from your closet or your special treasure box and maybe put a little bit of time in and maybe we'll even start to complete some of these things which would be kind of fun so i worked on amtrak and then i went the total opposite route for the second project that i wanted to focus on saturday and i picked one of my newest starts that had very little stitching on it and so that was my avlia byzantine rose bit kit the designer is krista west of Avlia Folk Embroidery, and you can find her on YouTube. I know, isn't it pretty? So a little while back, I brought some of Krista's bit kits, some, and not just the bit kits, but a few of her kits in general, I brought them into the shop. So I actually sell these now, and I, I had to do a shop model. I mean, it would just be silly not to. The shop model might take me six months, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, I started mine a little while ago now. So I wanted to put a couple of hours of work into it. And here's where I got to. So it is so fun to stitch. So fun. Look at that design. Isn't it pretty? So that of course is the entire, that's the design around the entire border. It's lovely. And so I've got my floss on some floss drops that were gifted to me from Andrea, uh, by Andrea. Um, she gave them to me at the Stitch North Retreat and a floss bling from my friend Lori, Lori Sykes, who had these made for her table mates and a few other friends as well. So, look at that floss wing. So the, it's DMC thread that comes in the kits and I just sorted it out into its color and yeah, easy peasy. So the kits come with the fabric, the floss, they even come with a needle uh, and it's a lot of fun. The fabric's a little bit different. The fabric is a, um, Krista brings it in from Greece. I'm not, I'm pretty sure. Yes, imported from Greece. It's called Makini. Makini, I'm, oh, I hope I'm getting that even close. So it's a 30 count Makini ground cloth. So it's right in between 22 and 38. Um, it's really, it's quite nice fabric to work on. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. This is the piece and it comes fully surged. The kit comes with everything prepared. Basically you can open the package and start stitching. And I think they're quite reasonably, reasonably priced for an entire project. Anyway, so yeah, and that of course comes with the chart. And she includes uh, finishing instructions. And she has link to, um, let me read this to you. I'm not gonna read you the entire instructions, but she talks about a hem technique two different hem techniques for finishing this into this table runner. So it's a different finish, right? Which is actually really quite nice. Um, you can, both hem techniques are shown on our videos and demos page at www.avliaembroidery.com. So she actually gives you a link to a video to help you figure out how to do. Can, can you see it? The hem stitch that she's used there? There it is, look at that. So she, she helps you um, figure out how to do that. Pretty cool. 
so yeah I worked on that which was fun always and then oh you know what I actually I have to um, I have to I have to drive the box over to the delivery place I didn't realize it was already three o'clock so I'm gonna push pause and then I'm going to make a cup of coffee as soon as I get back and then finish chatting with you I don't have much more just a little bit more but um, it would be a shame if I didn't show you the other two things that I worked on so I'll be back in about half an hour though it won't it'll only be like two seconds to you back. it is so hot out there like it's 37 degrees Celsius plus humidity it's so hot so if I look a little droopy that is why a little wind blown as well uh, oh it was so nice I um I had to go to chit chats which is the place where I take our orders for the shop that um, then get put into the postal delivery service it's a third they're a third party shipper service and remember I was telling you last week about my friend Cheryl who makes those bags um, my needle my needle crafts Cheryl was there at the same time so I got to see my friend we had a little chat a little hello so that was uh, yeah, that was really nice all right let's get finished up here just a couple things more to show you oh and before I finish up with that one thing I just I remembered while I was in the car that I hadn't told you about um, going back to the retreats with Jacob next year there's two ways you can if you're not on Facebook you can also sign up for our newsletter on the website for our shop which is www.evertote.ca if you think if you scroll to the bottom of the home page there's a place where you can sign up for our shop newsletter and we will be sending out um, the same kind of big updates that we do on the Facebook group we will send out emails um, regarding the same thing so I think that's it can you hear Matt Matt's listening to a funny podcast while he's sewing today and every once in a while just out of the blue he laughs and Matt has the best laugh you, know, you meet people who have good laughs Matt has the best laugh it makes everyone around him laugh because it's funny we don't know what he's laughing at it's just it's funny okay Isabella's heart Ta-da! See, I've done so much since the last time I shared it with you. I completed the heart in the middle at the top. I have almost completed the fan in the middle. I just have a couple more segments to do on this side here. Luna's having a good snore now behind me. Look at that heart, isn't it cute? It's so pretty. And then I've started the second half of the big heart there. Oh, and I extended my border a little bit too. I've been working the border at the same time so that I wouldn't have to count, uh, so that I would just know when it was finished. So yeah, there it is so far. Isabella's Heart by Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. And I am using the called for flosses, which are Falu Red, Flamingo, and Antique Wedding Dress. And the fabric is a 28 count Leo and Roxy Flosco fabric as well, which is um, blank slate colorway. The 28 count that I have now is a little bit lighter than this. It's not quite as dark. A little bit lighter. Yeah, it's so pretty. Two strands of floss over too. love that this I am I am really going to miss this project when I'm done I felt the same way about the red berries design that I was working on of Jacobs it's just uh, it's I talk about comfort stitching when I work on my landmark tapestries charts this is similar it's not quite the same because it's not mind not mindless in the good way mindless stitching where you're it's just pure comfort this you you do have to follow the chart but there's just something about it it's just three colors and you know you can load up your needle with just one color of floss and stitch until the thread is gone 
and you know creating this beautiful design with just three colors has been really fun I stitched this one in hand most of my stitching now that is on the larger counts like 28 and 32 I stitch in hand and really enjoying it okay this last one I have a little bit of progress to share with you though maybe it's a fair bit I don't remember if I've even shared this since the first or second time I since I started it this is the um, another modern folk embroidery piece Halsingland Blommer And I am stitching this on a piece of 28 count, one of a kind, uh, mossy khaki green by Leo and Roxy Flasco. And that's where I'm at. This was a one of a kind. I don't have any more. It's all gone. But how fun is that? Look at that. I was working on this as I was um, editing videos the last couple of weeks and it's funny how quickly it, it grows so the two colors I'm using are Pippi and South Beach that's the brighter one in there 28 count two strands of floss over two and it's going to be a cushion for my couch I have an olive green couch that's quite dark and I think this is, well, I know it is. I, I stitch in the living room, so I've, I put it on my couch so that I can see it. And I think it's gonna look really pretty. Looking forward to it. Okay, I should have done this when I sat down to start again, but my battery's almost dead. So I'm gonna swap out my battery, and then I've got one last thing to share with you today. Well, I was a total liar. I said I only had one thing to share, but I actually have three more things to share because I forgot to show you my knitting. So I'll be, I'll be brief with the knitting because one of them is just kind of a real update. Um, I'll save that one for a second. First up, Sarah's Afghan. You're going to be seeing this week after week after week. So this is just an honesty check, really. Honesty check on Sarah's Afghan. I showed you where my progress keeper was last week. This is the Talon Throw by Brooklyn Tweed, T-A-L-O-N. And that's the pattern. And last time, there, my progress keeper, I moved it. You can see that there's with those three squiggly bumps there. And I did all of that up to there I know it doesn't look like a lot but these cable rows take a quite a long time and I don't use a cable needle I now cable without a cable needle thanks to my friend Dawn who I was telling you about way back at the beginning of this podcast Dawn taught me how to cable without a cable needle and it's actually super easy and it's a really useful trick I'm sure there's a gajillion videos on YouTube on how to do it just look up how to cable without a cable needle. Very simple, really useful when you're doing a project like this that has so many cables across the entire row, it does help to speed things up. But yeah, so this is doubled. So this blanket is, the rows are very long. So that actually is quite a lot of progress for a week. And I only have one more row to do until this pattern repeat is done. And that ball of yarn that I showed you last week, done. I finished and it, <laughs> I thought it was maybe the fourth ball of yarn, but it wasn't. It's only the third. I have completed three balls of yarn. I'm not telling you how many balls of yarn I have for this project because then you just laugh and make fun of me. But I have fully completed three and I have caked up and I'm ready to go with the next one. So I am ready. I am not letting a day pass that I don't put a row into this blanket. So I'm ready to go. The yarn that I'm using I don't think I actually told you this last week, is a yarn by Broco. It's Broco Vintage. It's a very affordable, decent quality yarn that is part wool and part acrylic. So it's a great gift yarn for uh, someone who isn't maybe a crafter. So you don't really, oh, I am really, I am all over the place here. I was really, whew, went to town. Well, you'll just, 
just excuse the excuse the rat's nest anyways um great for people who, you don't have to worry about how it's going to take care of it's easy for, they don't have to worry that they're going to ruin your hard work because it's very easy care so uh it's a super wash machine wash inside out in cold water well inside out for a sweater Machine wash in cold water, gentle cycle, lay flat to dry. 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 8% nylon. I've made a couple of, um, I made a baby blanket for friends for a gift out of actually almost an identical color. And it was another Brooklyn Tweed pattern. I love, love Jared Floods. He's the designer behind Brooklyn Tweed. I love his patterns. They are really my jam. They're, they're beautiful. Um, so, you know, maybe look through Brooklyn Tweed catalog if you like similar designs to this. He's got, there's a whole bunch. They're gorgeous. Gorgeous. So, fourth ball about to be added in. So, hooray, hurrah. Morocco Vintage and the color is color number 5106. 5106. Roco vintage. This is pretty easy to find. Yeah, it's a great it's a great workhorse yarn, and um, when you're doing such a big blanket, it's it's a little more expensive than something like a you know a red heart yarn that is 100% acrylic. Uh, it's a little more expensive than that, but I think the feel of it, the feel of it's really really nice and and it's easy care. So it's kind of it's a really nice combo. A little bit higher price point than something like that, but not like a hand dyed yarn, you know. So, gorgeous. Okay, I will put that back in my bag later. Because actually, um, I'm going to add this on before I go home. So that it's done. when it's Because it's out of the bag now, I'll add the yarn and then go home. Okay, so remember I told you I took a bag for myself? Here's what I wanted it for. This is not a new start, and most of you probably won't recognize this project. Some of you might. This was a, I've been missing my sock knitting. I, I love, love knitting socks. But I had to kind of give it up for a while because I was really having a lot of trouble with my, my hand. And um, I, my preferred method to knit socks is on a small circular needle. And so it was really giving my hand a lot of trouble. You know, um, I thought maybe, you know, I, I had some advice. Maybe it was De Quervin's, uh, maybe it was carpal tunnel, maybe it was just a trigger finger or something like that. But it was definitely overuse of, of some sort. I have a feeling what originally caused it to happen was way back when um, I went to the New Jersey, now it's going to sound like I'm totally blaming <laughs> the New Jersey floss tube retreat. Back in 2019, I went to the New Jersey floss tube retreat and I made notion pouches for all of the attendees as like gifts for like a hundred people. So I made like 110 notion pouches in three days, like flat out. That's all I was doing for three days. And of course, I was trying to move fast and when I was inserting the lining into the bag, I was using my hand and probably hyperextending my thumb and my forefinger to push the corners into the bag. I think that's when I first noticed, like after, I think that was the original probably root of overuse. And then from then on, every time I overdo stuff, um, I notice I have a problem with it. So then I really, I, because I get hyper-focused on things and I love sock knitting, I don't tend to put it down. I don't listen to my body. So if my hand is starting to cramp up a little bit, I, I don't notice. I'll ignore it until it's too late. So I tried, I just, I said, okay, you've got to give it a break. You just have to be a grown up here about it. Give it a rest. And so I did. And I haven't really done... I've done very, very little sock knitting since the last pair that I finished a while back. So I thought, okay, things are feeling pretty good. Let's pick it back up again. But let's pick up an old sock that had a pattern. 
because the vanilla socks where you don't really have to think and you just go round and round and round, that's kind of where I get into trouble. So I thought if I go for a pattern sock, and it's a simple pattern sock, then maybe that'll slow me down a little bit and it will also force me to put my hands down every couple of rows so I can check the pattern. And that I'm going to make as my check-in. Okay, check-in, how's your hand feeling? Is it time to stop? Let's not stop too late, you know what I mean? So kind of like self-talk, right? So that I don't overdo it. So, I started a sock two years ago that was a pattern that was designed by a woman I watch on YouTube. Uh, her name is Lorraine and her podcast is called LNS Crafts. And um, I really enjoy her podcasts because first of all, um, she's just, she's got a really, she's, she's really calm presence. And uh, I think she's quite, <sighs> I like that she's willing to try anything and when she tries something that she really likes, she's all in. So if she's trying a new craft and she really likes it, she's all in. And then her enthusiasm for it is really, it's very similar to how I feel about a lot of the things that I do. Um, the knits that she does not, that she, not designs, the knits that like she, her sweaters and stuff that she knits for herself. Uh, and she also crochets as well, are, are very flattering. She's good at um, taking a pattern and modifying it slightly so that it fits her. I find that very inspiring and it's something that I would really like to learn how to do. And so I think that by watching people who, who do those sorts of things, you know, we learn a lot, right? So I'm going to link her podcast in the drop down box below. Again, her name is Lorraine and it's LNS Crafts on YouTube. And so Lorraine has a sock pattern that I purchased. It's called the biscuit sock pattern. I'm going to put a link in the description box directly to the chart. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a vanilla sock, but it just has a little bit of extra detail in the chart. And the cuff is totally different than most cuffs that I do. And in fact, and I'm going to show you. So here's, I'll tell you about the yarn after. Here's the cuff. And so you can see there. It's not gonna focus, it's funny. There. See that? Slightly different cuff than a knit two purl two. And I've I'm I'm down into the meaty part of the sock now, so I've started that. So um, the cuff doesn't cinch in like a two by two rib. So it is a little more, it's a little wider than I'm used to for a cuff. However, those of us who don't have particularly slim ankles, I'm thinking that this might actually be a good fit. Not ankles, calves, calves. That's what I meant. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I think this might be a good fit. So, Biscuit Sock by Lorraine. Um, what is it, Ashley? I can't remember her last name. Lorraine. Anyway, I'll have a link to the pattern in the drop down box below. So. I've pulled my sock back out. I've 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 gone through the pattern again. I've refamiliarized myself with the pattern, and I've actually picked it up and knit three more rounds. So I know where I'm at. I've figured out my tension. Like this yarn, and I'll, again, I'll tell you about it in just a sec. This is a slightly thin fingering weight yarn, and if you're not interested in knitting, I apologize. I'm going to get to some more stitching in just a minute. Um, it's slightly thinner than a lot of the sock yarn that I'm used to working with. So I find that my gauge is a little tighter than it has been in uh, the last couple of socks that I've knit. So I've kind of done a couple of rounds just to check that my, my stitches look fairly similar to 
what they were before and I think I'm pretty good so I'm because I considered ripping it out and starting again because I thought oh your tension's not gonna be the same it's been so long since you worked on that sock but I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna carry on I think it's gonna be fine so the yarn the yarn is this beautiful green pistachio with hints of brown and sorry I just jammed that right in your face didn't I there we go look at that see that look at all those little pops of color in there it's so pretty so this is a yarn by a, a hand dyer in Alberta Canada and in fact I think this this yarn business now actually has a brick and mortar shop since I purchased this yarn I think they've actually opened a brick and mortar shop so they're called polka dot Creek polka dot Creek and the name of this yarn um, was called pistachio nut crunch and it's a 75% superwash merino 25% nylon 100 grams 463 yards a fingering weight ply a fingering weight for ply so polka dot Creek here we go see and I did keep my yarn tag in the bag in the other bag because I def transferred this into a new bag it's nice to have a new bag to say so there's my sock new sock well it's not new sock but it feels a bit new because it's been so long since I worked on it but it's time it's time to put the sock back in my daily crafting repertoire so there you have it that's my sock okay now is the very last thing that I wanted to share with you today which I wasn't originally going to share with you today but since I showed you my bag now I have to show you what's inside so this is whatever happened to whatever happened to seasons by Amy Bear needlepoints so nothing ever happened to it it's just been sitting in the other room safe and sound in its project bag I haven't touched it I haven't put a single stitch in so now that I have to pull it out that means that I have to put at least one length of thread in it before it disappears again and trust me that's gonna be really hard to only do one so let's see if we can do a few this chart was gifted to me um, by a viewer named Laura and Count it, this is counted canvas work, and if you've never done it before, it's a little bit of a rabbit hole, just warning you, because it's really fun, and it's really beautiful, and the stitches work up quite fast, because you're not using, um, you're using different types of, of thread to stitch these designs. So I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about this today, because I have a funny feeling I'm at probably like an hour and a half of video here, which is, really long um, so I will tell you more about counted canvas work next week and I'll show you um, some other examples of some other work that I've done um, if you've been here for a while you've heard me talk about counted canvas work before but if you're new this might be a new discussion for you and it's really fun and it's it's really beautiful so uh, yeah counted canvas work a couple of designers to check out that are great for new canvas work stitchers um, my favorite is probably Nancy's Needle. So you can check out some designs by Nancy's Needle. Any of the quilt block series are very um, beginner friendly. And her instructions are great as well. The instructions that come with those charts are great. Now it is a whole new kind of language with supplies. So we'll talk more about that next week, okay? So, you know, if you wanna learn more about counted canvas work, come back and see me next week and uh, we'll, have, we'll have a chat about that. So that's the cover photo and so Laura gifted me the chart and then I kitted up the supplies this was one of the this was one of the first bags that I ever made um, so I've got all of my threads are in there and then that's oh, that's the rest of the pattern I need to show you that okay are you ready Oh, I haven't looked at this in so long this is exciting this is exciting you guys I'm glad I showed you the bag gravy this is nice okay so and I wrote top on it so I would oh look at it look at how pretty that is 
Actually, I have more done on it than I remembered. That's always exciting. There, you see that? So there's the center design. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. So just compare that. There's the middle. And there's mine. There. Gorgeous. Oh, I still have my needle minder on there. I think that was... Oh, I don't remember where I got that needle minder from. And my needle is still on it. So look, I'm totally ready to go. The needles that I use for canvas work are usually a 22 count, a 22 count, a 22, number 22 tapestry needle. And so it's either a 22 or a 20. Just by feeling, I can't quite tell. But they're a blunt tip needle. Yeah. I know what I want to stitch on tonight. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to put a couple of threads in that. Okay, I'll put that away in a minute after I say goodbye because I honestly, I have no idea how long this video is gonna be. It's probably gonna be super long. So apologies, I, I suspect mo most of you will have to watch this in a couple of different segments if you are still here at the end. Uh, thank you, thank you for visiting with me today. I had a lot to talk about a lot of really exciting things, a lot of fun things to share. And um, can I just say how nice it is to be back to a weekly routine of recording? It feels really good. It feels, um, uh, you know, I, I find that I'm inspiring myself. That it sounds really funny and kind of weird. I'm not saying that in a boastful way, but doing this is serving the purpose that I really hoped it would in that it's bringing fresh light to my stitching and um, how I'm feeling about how I'm stitching at home. Like I'm thinking about showing you and talking about it with you and um, yeah, it's been really nice. So thank you for being here. Thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing and uh, thanks for hanging out. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. It's almost dinner time for you know who. So she's still sleeping, so maybe I'll get everything packed up before, before I need to do that. And then uh, I'm gonna get this edited and up on YouTube so that we can visit together. And I will be back in a week. I'll see you next Tuesday. So until then, I hope you're well, I hope you're safe, and I hope that you have some crafting to enjoy. So take care everybody. Happy stitching.